The only logical project after the wonderful tones of grayscale of Jack Skellington's house is the most colorful dinosaur you have ever seen. Back in August, we started having a project challenge over on Patreon. The first one to kick it off was, I put together a little bit over 50 color palettes for everyone to randomly choose from, and then making something based off of that. I ended up randomly choosing this one. I decided I wanted to design my own dinosaur dragon kind of thing. I wanted to create a dinosaur that could traverse land, sea, and air. I don't know if I fully successfully incorporated that, but as always, the thought was there. How'd you do this? I'll show you. It's of course time to start sculpting. You may already know that that is one of my weak areas, but you'll never get better at it if you don't do it. As always, we are starting with an armature. I am using two different types of wire for this that I just had laying around. I had this green plastic coated wire. I'm not exactly sure what it's from. It's a really thick gauge wire and super sturdy, so it was great for the main spinal shape. I did take the plastic off. I do try to make a habit of never putting plastic in a toaster oven. I'm then wrapping a thinner wire around that and bending that to make the limbs. I wanna say immediately that I do actually know the better way to make an armature where you twist and double up the wire. I usually don't do it because you have to use more wire and wire is a little expensive. Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. It would make my life so much easier though. I wanted to have one arm kind of reaching forward, maybe like it's walking. I decided I wanted the back legs to be a little like frog legs. I don't really know how to explain it, but I think you'll see what I mean. <laughs> mutated the dinosaur genetic code and blended it with that of frogs. Then it looks like a stick bug. Everything's going fantastic. Then we have to build up foil to bulk out the necessary areas. This is gonna be a long kind of lizard-like creature, so I didn't have to do too, too much work here. The one thing about the workflow of clay that I find very challenging is that it really just looks terrible for so long that you really never know if you're gonna get there in the end. Creation is an act of sheer will. It only really comes together at the end, at least in my experience at my skill level. Then I had to cover everything with clay as best as I could. I didn't cover the whole thing. I actually waited on the limbs for a little while, not for any reason. Most of what I do isn't for a reason. I just do it on a whim. Is that a good way to sculpt? Not necessarily, but this is a come watch me struggle video. Honestly, most videos are a little bit like that. Then I started sculpting on some details. I did have the head on at first, but I pulled it off later to work on the details of it because it was much easier. So I started by pressing indentations in for the eyes and putting an eyeball in there and then laying eyelids over the top of that. Apparently my new favorite sculpting tool is a crochet hook because they work surprisingly nicely for blending. The head is a little bit bird-like. It kind of has a sort of beak. So I carved some lines in the head to start mapping out where that was gonna be. Then I'm making some feet by cutting some toes. I've also pulled out my umbrella to take a look at the dinosaur handle and get some inspiration. I have had this umbrella since I was probably about five. At this point, it's basically a family heirloom and I could not be happier about that. I'm using a mechanical pencil because it has a really small, basically circle. It creates skin-like kind of texture. I also textured some lines carrying in some of the bird-like qualities of the head. I really love the idea of those sort of geometric back spike pieces very inspired by a stegosaurus. So I'm cutting out some triangle shapes and then forming them into some different shapes that I want them to look like. I've said this before, I can very often do something that I like by accident, but when I have to make more than one, it doesn't go so well. <laughs> 
I did want to make them all a little bit different, so I have a big variation in sizes and shapes. I also made some tiny claws as well to go on the feet. And I baked the back pieces and the claws together. I put the claws into the toes, and then I cut a slit in the back that I could put the back spikes in, and then blended it in with the rest of the body. I laid them out in a pattern that I liked. So I saw Anycrafts do this really cool scale texture using a straw and I really wanted to try that so I started doing that on the side of the body and honestly I shouldn't have done it now all of this work is gonna be undone later as I <laughs> put other pieces on and work with it but I was just too excited about trying it bad decisions. your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could they didn't stop to think if they should basically you just take the straw push it upwards and it creates really super easy scales I went and covered the tail with clay. Okay, well, <laughs> if I don't drop something during a project, you know it's not me. It's a clone, and they're trying to fool you. It's all part of the miracle of cloning. Hello, John. <laughs> Hello. Hello, John. I would love to like sculpting one day. Today might not be that day, but we'll get there. And then blended in the remaining back spikes and continued them down the tail as well. Definitely just squashed the entire side of scales here. So I'm gonna have to redo that, but what else is new? I love clay. I also drew on a tummy texture. Basically it's just a big kind of rectangle, but not really, with lines going across to divide it into segments. I started texturing down the arms with the mechanical pencil again. Then I put the feet on, inevitably undoing so much of my texture work. Then I started building up the neck area with some kind of triangle segments that are suspiciously like the back spikes. Blended that in and made some different segments as well. Then I had to start working on the wings. I'm making the wing from liquid latex, a very similar technique that I did with the tail in my Monster Bash monster, but it's a little different. So I drew out the wings on a piece of wax paper so that I can lay streamer pieces and liquid latex over it in the shape. It's a very similar technique to paper mache, using pieces of a makeup sponge to dab the liquid latex on, and then laying on a piece of some leftover streamers, which I think is like crepe paper and it is textured which is great for this. I also laid in two wire pieces to give it some structure. Once they were dry I peeled them off from the wax paper and then it was finally time to start painting which was the whole point of this challenge. I did have to get some super bright colors for this. I always buy the super, super cheap paint. I don't know if I would necessarily say I recommend it, but it will work. I'm also using my wet palette again, which is just so good. I'm starting out with this teal color and using that as a base for most of the dinosaur. I'm kind of going by what colors that I like the most, honestly. The thought was that I would start with teal and then use the dark blue to kind of gradient the feet and the tail and stuff, and then also use the green as a kind of highlight. I used pieces of a makeup sponge that I also used in my liquid latex application to sponge the darker blue on. It was actually really great to create the gradient. I could just kind of build up layers of it to transition the colors. And of course, I always have a little helper here. Then I'm using that green screen green as a highlight accent to make the scales pop more and give them more dimension. And then also going in with a small detail brush to go under the scales with the dark blue and really separate them from each other. I'm also using that bright green to highlight above the eye and also go on some stubby bits of the arms and give it a little manicure. I actually really love the bright green screen green on the nails. I think they really pop. I painted the wings purple so that they would stand out but also be able to blend pretty well. I also painted the underside of the stomach with purple. I was really trying to save those super bright colors for accent colors. So I painted the back spikes pink. I do really love the color scheme of that teal with a really bright pink. I'm trying to decide. If I like the wings, because I'm not so sure. <laughs> to smile my heart. Just 
The thing I struggled with trying to decide what color to paint the most was the beak area. I went for just the pink at first, but I kind of didn't really love it. So I went over with the blue, and as I was doing that, I did like the contrast of the dark blue against the pink. So I kind of went with a two-tone thing where I had a pink outline with a blue main part of the beak and then highlighting it a little bit with the teal. It kind of reminded me a little bit of a toucan beak. I used pink to create some highlights on the belly. Starting light and then building it up, shadowing at the base and creating that highlight on the top high points. I also painted the eyes. Then I started doing some detailing on the wings, painted on the teal parts to kind of continue the body. Start a revolution so beautiful it is. And then I shaded in with the dark blue in the corners and started laying on some sort of lighter pink purple veins following the liquid latex texture. Made it look a little bit more realistic. Not that this is a very realistic piece and that's not really the point, but then I attached the wings to the arms with hot glue and blended it in with the liquid latex. I had to do a little wing modification here. It was not the same size. I don't know why I did that, but here we are patching up our mistakes. And then I painted those all, of course, to blend in everything. I decided to go in and make some scales fully green as accents to give a little bit more interest and differentiation. I also dry brushed some pearl paint onto the wings to give some shiny, sort of silvery texture. I added a gloss varnish to the eyes. And then I had a feather that was just the perfect color. If I can't have a pink mohawk, one of us has to, you know? I kid you not, I have had these feathers since middle school. That was not <laughs> centered at all. <laughs> oh no. And then we had to make a base for it to stand on. For the base, I wanted to keep things pretty simple. So I put the dinosaur onto a piece of foam core and cut out a shape that I thought would be good for it to stand on. And then I carved out some super jagged edges to look a bit earthy, I guess. Is that earthy? <laughs> and then I brushed on a coat of glue and sprinkled that dirt on like glitter. This is basically the same process that I used as on the Hobbit Hole project. After I had a layer of dirt on to create that texture, stippling on some different shades and building up some lighter and darker areas, to create kind of just a grassy terrain. Now the whole concept that I had for this is that the dinosaur lives in this really brightly colored environment. These bright colors actually camouflage it. So going along with that, we are painting the rocks purple. I'm also painting some twigs green so that they can be stems for flowers that I'm going to create. Now the petals for the flowers are actually pieces of dried flowers that I used in my Autumn Studio Ghibli cookie tin. I painted them pink. Yeah, they were surprisingly perfect at this scale. I had a couple of dead leaves laying around so I painted those pink and green and just kind of crushing them up to create a lot of different little pieces. I placed the dinosaur where it was going to go on the base and I glued the rocks on based on that. I started placing on the flowers. I sort of grouped them with different heights. I'm using the pink painted leaf as petals scattered around the ground that maybe have fallen from the flowers. And I'm using the green leaf pieces similarly in that they are small pieces of leaves that maybe have scattered all around the ground. Then I thought I needed some sort of tall grass. I used some string, unraveled that, painted it green, cut pieces of it, creating little tufts and sticking them on and then spreading them out and positioning them. This was maybe my favorite part of the process. Project. It was just so fun to put on these little grass tufts for some reason. I think everything kind of looks a little bit like a video game. I was very inspired by Spore. So yeah, we're not going for full realism, obviously, especially with the colors. Although who knows? There could have been a really brightly colored dinosaur. And now let's see our dinosaur frolicking in its flower field. <laughs>
This was a really fun project. Honestly, I really feel like the sculpting leaves so much to be desired as always. I very much have so much to learn, but we're working on it. Making a project based on a color palette is a really fun challenge. I also really loved this color palette. That might be because I was the one putting the color palettes together. <laughs> Most importantly, I do want to show you all of the amazing projects that came from this challenge over on Patreon. The amount of talent everyone has, all of you really, really inspire me to do my own work as well. So if you wanna join us over on Patreon, there will be lots more project challenges in the future. Honestly, I feel really stupid to admit this, but my camera did in fact take a fall today and I did in fact break it, which is really great. That's not funny. And the only reason I can film this is because my dad is very kindly letting me use his camera. So I'm going to have to either try to fix my old camera myself because it is so old that they do not repair it anymore or I have to get a new camera. So I don't know, I'm stressed. <laughs> Play the Avatar clip. Your future is full of struggle and anguish. Most of it self-inflicted. I'm so mad at myself. Thank you so, so much to everyone on Patreon and also everyone that has supported me on Coffee because it's probably all going to go to a camera potentially. <laughs> I need pet therapy.